Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar, they were planning a visit to Israel and the Palestinian territory for the last and for last week and this week but however the israeli government reviewed their anti-israel anti-zionist anti-semitic statements and decided to deny them now what the press is saying here is that israel only barred rashida talib and the the other crazy person because of trump's tweets What's going on here? Let's break it down. What's going on with this situation? And is it just Trump's tweets or is it their rhetoric that is affecting their ability to go to Israel? Well, Jermaine, that's the perfect question to start today's segment. Um, Like Americans, uh, Israelis do not hang on every tweet that comes out of the uh, mobile phone run by Donald <laughs> Trump in the White House. Um, this is a lot more significant than the president's tweets. Basically, here's the situation. Israel has a law that was passed several years ago in the Knesset uh, by a very large number that allowed the Israeli government to bar entry to any person outside of Israel who advocates for the BDS movement. BDS, as your viewers probably know, stands for Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions, and it's an economic strangulation movement against Israel in the hopes of destroying the state of Israel. Now, why do I say the purpose of BDS is to destroy Israel? Well, that's what the founder of the BDS movement, Omar Bagudi, said. His goal is the elimination of a Jewish state. So everybody in favor of BDS is in favor of the elimination of Israel. Now, that's bad enough, and that disqualifies them under the law, Jermaine. Mm -hmm. Two women have gone way beyond the BDS movement with anti-Semitic, anti-Israel, anti-Zionist statements that go back years. Their affiliations with very prominent terror organizations, very prominent anti-Semites, very prominent anti-Israel, and, and get this, organizations actively carrying out terror in Israel is profoundly disturbing and should bother your audience to the point of walking precincts in Michigan and in Minnesota Mm -hmm. or whoever runs against them in 2020. So here's what Israel did. There was a very large delegation of Democrats and Republicans who were planning a trip, House of Representatives members from both sides of the aisle, to Israel several weeks ago. The entire Congress was invited. Two prominent people, Talib and um, Omar both said, no, we don't want to go with a group. We don't want to go with our own party. We are going to make our own trip. Mm-mm-mm. Now, Israel would have been okay with that, except what they really meant to do was to create, I know this is going to sound shocking to your viewers, but I'm going to prove what I'm going to say, a terror publicity campaign the group that was going to sponsor them and pay for the trip is a terror organization in the bank that supports suicide bombers and car rammers and people that stab Jews in Jerusalem and on and on and on. So under the law, Israel had the right to say no, and they did. Here's where the story gets tricky, and it's really important that your viewers follow this. So Omar gave up. Tlaib said, I'm not giving up. I really wanted to go because I wanted to visit my very, very old grandmother who lives in the West Bank, and this is going to be my last chance. So please, government of Israel, let me go visit my grandma. What did Israel say? Well, if you promise not to incite violence, if you promise not to encourage rioting, 
sure, come to Israel. We'll give you a visa. We'll escort you the whole way. You can go see grandma and you can record the whole thing. Now you would think as a rational person that Talib would have said, oh boy, thanks, I'm going. You granted my request exactly as it was given. <laughs> That's not what she did. <laughs> not at all. Round and said, oh, my trip's approved? Yes. The way I requested it? Yes. Well, I'm not going to go because you're racist and you're bigots and you're just as bad as racist apartheid South Africa. So I'm going to stay home and start crying. And that's what she did. It had nothing to do with President Trump. It had to do with their behavior. And ironically, this is important. When she said, for humanitarian reasons, let me come, Israel said, okay. And they granted her everything she wanted. And then she revoked her request and said, I can't go because you're racist. And I can't go because it would be humiliating. And I don't want to see my grandmother. <laughs> and ironically, the comment from the interior minister, minister of Israel is, apparently Talib hates the Jews in Israel more than she loves her grandmother. All this here is rhetoric to try to break up Israel to try to break up the U.S. and Israel relationship. That is a relationship that a lot of people hate across the world. They hate it for a lot of reasons. In my eyes, one reason why they hate it is because there's strength and unity there. All right. Um, Israel and the United States have a strong bond because of the, um, you know, the uh, the religion, of course. Right. And also the cultural aspect as well. Um, we have to make sure that we look out for, you know, what we call our little brother, Israel. Well, Doing don't what, for me. They yeah. are our closest strategic military mm -hmm. and intelligence ally in half of the world. They are literally the front lines against terror. We work with Israel 24-7 combating Islamic Jihad, Hamas, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and the various other crazy suicide-wanting uh, Islamic groups that want to take over the world. So strategically, they're the front line. Yep. We're not. They are. And as far as cooperation, there could not be more cooperation between our two countries than there is right now. Rashida Tlaib, as you just mentioned astutely, Jermaine, wants to cut that tie because it doesn't fit her narrative. So when Israel grants her everything she wants, she goes on television, lies and cries to promote sympathy for the mm -hmm. fact that she's been oppressed as a woman of color. <laughs> and ironically, <laughs> there are a lot darker women than her who are African in Israel who serve in the army, serve in the police, serve in the government, serve in the hospitals, sit in the Knesset, and they are Muslim, many of them. Mm -hmm. And it's the only country, the only country in the Middle East, where Jews, Muslims, Christians, Baha'is, and atheists all serve side by side in the government, in the army, on the Supreme Court, in the hospitals, in the border police, everywhere. And guess what? They all vote. They all have equal rights under the law, the only country in the Middle East like that. But that doesn't fit her narrative. So that is not what she talks about.